Hello, hello! Welcome back to the channel. And today, I have a review for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And I'm not gonna say it that third time. So, um, before we get started with the review, I want to address... This review is a little late. <laughs> um, I saw this movie on Sunday, and at the time of recording and uploading this, it's Tuesday. And, um... I just kind of want to say why I was late. I know none of y'all fucking care, so if you don't care, you can skip this part. But, um, so, when I got home from the theater, uh, my throat, hard pain. Horrible pain and irritation. Couldn't talk. Couldn't talk without putting myself through hard pain. So, I was like, okay, I'll record it tomorrow. Uh, that, the next day, uh, that Monday, sick. Very sick. My voice sounded awful. So, there was no... Uh, point in recording the review because my voice sounded terrible. So I'm like, okay, I'll fucking do it tomorrow. The next day. So today. And I'm still maybe a little sick, so if my voice sounds a little like shit, that's why. But I'm just doing it now because I don't want to forget and record it like weeks later like I did with Scream 6. But, um, so yeah, just saying, it's a little late. My fault. I got sick. I'm a dumbass. So, enough about that. Let's just review the movie. So, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The long-awaited sequel to the 1988 horror comedy classic directed by Tim Burton. And, up the top, it's good. It's not as good as the original, and I'll get to why. But, if you want a non-spoilery, like, score, before we get to the main score, 7.5 out of 10. I'll get to the spoiler score at the end, but... The actual, like, blood bag at the end, but there you go. If you wanted a non-spoiler, like, rating, you get a 7.5 out of 10. So, now getting into actual spoilery details. Well, not spoilery details. I'm, we'll get to spoilers later. But this movie, um, is, takes place 36 years later. And it follows the Dietz family as they have to come back to the, the, ori the original movie's house. After the passing of Charles Dietz, um, who, no, despite him being dead, he's still in the movie, and we'll get to that later. But, um, and all of them are brought together. Lydia is now an adult. She has um, a, a, a paranormal investigating show, and she has an estranged daughter named Astrid, played by Jenna Ortega, who gets into some biz gets into some nasty business with the undead and because of this Lydia now has to call upon an old friend to get her, to save her daughter and while this is happening a old flame of beetlejuice is on a path to gain her revenge after beetlejuice killed her in life and that's only two of the fucking plots in this movie out of four so Let's start off with the pros for this movie. The first one is, the acting is great. Everyone in the cast does a great job. But the standout is Michael Keaton. Much like how he is in the first one. Michael Keaton, despite it being 36 years after they made the original, that man has not lost a single bit of energy or enthusiasm he had for that character. Like, the, he is 72 years old. I think he's 72. 71, 72, around that age. And, like, he is just as energized and lively as he was back in 1988. That is fucking impressive. And not so much lively for Batman, but Beetlejuice? Man, man's got the fucking energy with him. Second pro, this movie was still very funny. <laughs> There's a lot of really good laugh-out-loud moments that I had in this movie. So, yeah, no, that's another pro. Very funny. The third pro, and this is the one that I give Burton the most credit for, for the most part, it is practical effects. And you do not know how much I love the choice that they went to make it almost entirely practical. Because, I mean... I said this in the, I think I said this in the review for Alien Romulus. Movies have had a very inflated budget. And CG has just, hasn't been looking great recently. So I'm glad that they went almost entirely practical for this movie. And it shows, this movie looks way fucking better than a lot of other 
movies that get released nowadays. But like, I love seeing the practical like prosthetics for all the undead for all the undead characters. I love seeing the stop motion for the sandworms. It's just it's so fucking nice to see that on the big screen again. So nice. And hopefully this movie makes studios and filmmakers be like, we should, we should do that more. But yeah, practical effects, ugh, love that they decided to do that for this one. Um, Is that all the positives I got? No, I think... I, yeah, okay, the final positive I have before we get to the negatives is just like the original, love the look of this movie. I love the color palette. I love the set design cinematography, much like in the original. All that's still great here. Tim Burton still really hasn't lost his artistic vision. Now, on to the negatives. The biggest negative I have with this movie, and I think it's one that you're going to hear from a lot of people, this movie, incredibly overstuffed. Very overstuffed in the plot department. Um, going into spoilers here, like, there's, I think, four fucking plots in this movie. Like, you have the main one with Lydia and her daughter, Astrid, where Astrid, she meets a boy who she finds out is undead, and the boy tricks her into giving up her soul so he can live again, so Lydia calls calls Beetlejuice to help her. And that's, that's the plot that sets everything in gear. There's a secondary plot involving um, Delia, the stepmom from the original, Catherine O'Hara, um, her trying to, you know, do some weird mourning rituals for Charles, who is dead. Um, he's the His death is what brings the family together in this movie. Then there's also the subplot with the, the plot with Beetlejuice's ex-wife trying to get her revenge. There's also... Um, Willem Dafoe running around as a movie star turned, like a, a ghost movie star turned cop. Like, there's a lot of shit in this movie. Like, a lot of stuff. And since there's so much, it kind of makes things feel a little unbalanced and unfocused. At times, like, the stuff with Dolores, Beetlejuice's ex-wife, and Willem Dafoe, they kind of get sidelined, especially at the end of the movie. They get sidelined, like, so easily. In fact... Beetlejuice takes care of both of them, like, easily. Just, it's not even a problem. So, that makes those characters, it makes those characters feel wasted because, like, there's just so much in the movie that they're hardly focused on. So, Dolores and Willem Dafoe's character feel incredibly wasted in the movie. They're acted very well, but they just, they feel wasted. And another issue I have with this movie is that they show way too much of Charles Dietz in this. Which I, which I know is not the movie's fault. It's the actor's fault for why that's an issue. I mean, if you don't know what the, the actor did in real life, it's not, it's not going to be a problem. But if, if you do know what that son of a bitch did, it's going to be a little hard to swallow. I'm not going to say what he did, but you can look it up for your own. It's disgusting, though. So, didn't like seeing that character brought up a lot. Although, it was funny seeing that son of a bitch get eaten by a shark. That's pretty funny. Um, um, I think, is that everything I have to say with this movie? I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Shockingly gory. For a PG-13 movie, shockingly gory. Yeah, I, I think that's everything I got to say. So, yeah. Putting Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice into the blood bag here, I'm gonna give it the 75%. Um, it's a it's a good movie, espe- and you will have a good time, especially if you like the original. But the overstuffed plot makes it just very it makes it hard to fully love, you know. But yeah, that's my opinion. That's my review for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Again, sorry this video is late. Also, sorry if it feels a little rushed and if I feel all over the place. Again, still a little sick. But, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed my review for Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you enjoyed my content. And I'll see y'all next time. Uh, goodbye.